Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at survival analysis and what we are going to do is look at the Nelson Aylin uh, estimator. Now I hope I pronounced that right, Aylin. Uh, usually I'm reading out of books, uh, unusual names out of books or following from people who also just name, read names out of books so my pronunciation is not definitive. Anyway, a trial was conducted on the effectiveness of a cream to treat a skin condition. So we have 100 sufferers, uh, 100 sufferers applied the cream daily for four weeks or until their symptoms disappeared, if this happened sooner. And some of the sufferers left the trial before their symptoms disappeared, censoring in other words. So what we have here, we, we have the table broken down here. Now really actually there's a bit of a hazard in this question. It's the sort of thing that you just have to really get the hang of is how data is presented. So this is one set of people, and this is another set of people, okay? So this, uh, this is the people that w uh, the, the treatment was successful for, and this is essentially the censored data, okay, censoring here, okay. So two sufferers had their symptoms disappear after six days, one sufferer after seven, one after 10 days, and two after 14 days, okay? And similarly over here, what we have here is three left after day two, one laid left after day 10, and three people laid, uh, left after day 13, okay? So I'm gonna shorten this out actually. I was gonna look at part A in this uh, presentation, but I just realized I'm probably not going to actually, just to sort of, I'll skip past the definitions about censoring. So I'm just going to sort of scratch past those two. And I usually cover them in other videos anyway. So what I'm going to do here, it is very important, but I'm just going to go straight down to part C, D, and E, just to sort of keep things moving along briskly. So calculate the Nelson Aylin estimate of the survival function for this trial, and then the sketch, okay? And then estimate the probability that a person using the cream will still have symptoms after two weeks. Okay, so let's go down here to part C, okay? So essentially what we're going to do here is just sort of rework the, the information that we were given, okay? So we had 100 people in day one, or day zero, okay? And we had people either leaving or cured, okay? So uh, in day two, we had three people leaving. On day six, we had two people who felt their symptoms were better and they were essentially cured. Likewise, day seven, another person cured. Uh, day 10, uh, one person cured and one person left, okay? And day 13, we had another person who left the trial and then on day 14, uh, cured, okay? So that's sort of just essentially rephrasing what we have up here, okay, up at the top. So just more, make it more linear, okay? Actually, this is the sort of thing, how people present these sort of, the information contained in these tables. Nobody, mostly something like this works, but nobody is 100% satisfied. And also, just also another thing, I'm just sort of trying to make it fit in a page, okay? So it's legible, okay? So, uh, without too much scrolling up and down. Now, anyway, so this is the estimate that we're gonna look at, lambda t, and it's essentially the sum of the events here, that's the number of people cured, over the to total number of people in a duration. And we have this, uh, one of these for sort of, we build it up for each duration essentially, okay? Okay, sorry, I just paused there for a second to uh, take a breath. So this is the key thing we, we have to calculate here, lambda t, which is the cumulative sum of dj which is the number of events per period over nj so dj over nj is essentially an estimate of the event probability in each of the time periods that we're going to be looking at and essentially the cumulative sum on an onward ba on an ongoing basis okay so okay so let's really, let's look at time period zero now essentially this is the start of day zero and really what we're talking about is a period that continues on to the start of day two. So we have 100 people, no events, which is no people cured and no people leaving, which is to say no censoring. 
So essentially, nothing really happens there. Okay. So it just really, essentially, we just leave that blank. Nothing really happens. It's actually just zero, really. Okay. At the start of day two, we have 100 people. And what happens then is that there's no people cured, but three people leave the study. So at the end of this period, which goes on until day six, essentially the only thing that happens between the start of day two and the start of day six is that three people leave. But ultimately, nobody's cured. DJ over DN, so really, again, nothing really to report much yet. So at the start of day six, a time period that goes on to the start of day seven, we have 97 people. Two of them get cured. Nobody leaves the study. The event probability, which is the estimate of how many people would be cured in that period, is 2 over 97, which is 0 0.020619. Okay. So likewise, with start of day 7, okay, we have 95 people, which is uh, 97, uh, minus two people who were cured yesterday. Got another person cured. And the event probability there is essentially 1 over 95. So what we're going to do here is just actually add our 1 over 95 to our 2 over 97. And essentially it's going to move on like that. Essentially we're just sort of going to build this up a bit. It's a cumulative sum, but this one is just the addition of this number here as well. Okay. So if just say it's a cumulative sum. That's really what I'm just getting at. Okay. So, start of day 7, yeah, okay, we just mentioned that. Okay, so the next time period starts at day 10, okay? So, days 7, 8, and 9, the only thing that really happens is one person gets cured. Start of day 10, 90, we have 94 people. One gets cured, one leaves the study. Our event probability here is 1 over 94. So, just to be clear, it is the number of people who get cured divided by the number of people who potentially could have got cured over the course of that day, okay? So that's where this 1 over 94 comes from, okay? Now, we don't really use the censoring, uh, the sensor, the number of censored observations in this case for that part of the calculation, okay? The only thing that when the censoring, the censoring comes into play is that we note that this person and this person have left the study, uh, so we from what from we so we start with ninety four so that means in the next day we have lost two people or egg two people have exited for various reasons okay so here between day th thirteen the start of day thirteen and start of day fourteen, three people will leave the study nothing really happens this so this value here doesn't get updated actually you could have just i could have just sort of left that out really. Yeah, just uh, to be consistent with what I've done before, okay, because it just nothing happens really. So uh, well, just treat people leave. But as far as what we're concerned is, how, in terms of people being cured, nothing really happens. Okay, so start of day fourteen. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Start of day fourteen, we have ninety-four. Uh, eight, sorry, eighty-nine people. Two get cured. Nobody leaves the study. Two over eighty-nine, and that means. We have uh, our updated lambda value is 0 0.064255. Okay, now the survival function that we're going to be look using based on this Nelson Allen estimate is essentially the exponent of that value there, okay, of the minus lambda t. Okay, so it's essentially what we've done before. Okay, so we're sort of looking at all our various time periods. And remember, actually, this goes on for 28 days. Okay. So, what we, we, we obviously, it's just to sort of shorten the question. And we sort of stop in this question at day 14. So, it's essentially the last time period is 14 to 28. But, essentially, what we're doing here is getting the exponent of the negative, of the, of minus these numbers here. So this one, this one, this one. We don't really need that one and that one. Okay. So zero, oh uh, yeah, sorry, e to the minus zero is e to the minus zero is just simply one. Okay. Just for the sake of 
just for the sake of it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so these are the hazard functions for the various time periods. So we're just sort of shorten them down a bit because really, as far as we are concerned, sorry, that's, as far as we're concerned, this is start of day zero to the end of, to the start of day six, just before the start of day six, it's the end of day five. Like, really, just treat people, leave the study. But nothing really happens in terms of being cured, okay? So, yeah, so this is our hazard function here, our survival function, okay? And next period, 6 to 7, there we go. Uh, 7 to 10. And 10 to 14, and then 14 to 28, okay? So that is the survival functions for each of those time periods. Okay. Now what we do is we use these to come up with this sketch. It's essentially a sketch of what we've just done here before. Day, day zero to day six, that's one. Okay. Now it drops down a bit here to day seven, day ten, uh, day fourteen, and then out to day twenty-eight. Okay. And it's essentially, it's a step function, okay? And these, the heights of these values are essentially the height on the y-axis is these values here. That's how you draw it, okay? Potentially, you're not really going to be drawn these much anymore in exams, but that's how you would do it, okay? The last question is, uh, the survival probability at d equal, at t equal 14 is 0 0.8. 93777 which is essentially there is approximately a 94 94% chance of still having the symptoms after two weeks okay essentially one minus that oh sorry that there uh, yeah that's it there yeah so that's the 93% chance essentially just reading that table there and again I'm slightly getting mixed up with something else of the Nelson A or the Kaplan Meyer. So just disregard my one minus. Just pick out that number there. That's really just read it off on that table. Okay, leave it there.